Welcome back to this series about Angular 2, Vue.js and Laravel. We already covered a lot of ground and we hooked up Vue.js or Angular 2 Laravel. And right now we're working on the authentication. We already implemented ways for users to sign up and to sign in. And now we're getting back this JWT token or this JSON web token. And we want to use the token to make sure that we can control which user is able to access which resource. So if we have a look at our backend at the quote controller, this is where we basically allow the user to create quotes, get quotes, update them and so on. We probably don't want to allow access to all those actions for every user. Only authenticated users should be able to create a new quote or to update quotes or to delete quotes, I'd say. So this is what I will work on in this video here. I want to protect certain methods here so that users are only able to access them if they have a valid token. Let's work on this. Now, in order to use that token to make sure that we only allow access when we have a token, I'll start here in the post quote method for creating a new quote. Here, I want to check if a valid token is present. And for this, I can use the JWT auth package we installed in the last videos, which has a useful function or method for checking if the token is present and valid. So here in a if block, I will check if not. So I will check if something is not the case. And the thing I want to check is if I can create a user, can fetch a valid user. For this, I'll use the JWT auth facade. So make sure to use JWT off here at the top of your file. And on this facade, I will call the parse token method. Now, as the name implies, this method parses the token if any is present. If no token is present, well, we get an error instantly. So here on the parsed token, which means basically extracted and decrypted or decoded the token, I can now call the authenticate method, a method also provided by this package. This now tries to match the data encoded in the token with the data on our, well, in our database, on our, in our application here on the server. It will also check if the token is valid. Remember that in the config file for this package, this JWT file in the config folder, we had to set a secret. And this secret is used to hash our tokens, to kind of sign them. Now, the package will automatically use the secret to not only parse, to decode this token, but also to check if the token was actually created by us and no one else created a token, hashed it and passed it to us. So this is a two-step process. And with that, if this is successful, we have a user. So inside of this if block, since I check if this is not the case with the exclamation mark at the beginning, here we know we don't have a user because we weren't able to parse or to extract the user and authenticate the user. So here I want to return a response and this will be of course a JSON response and here I want to have the error code 404 or you could argue for 401 because you're not authenticated but I'll say 404 and simply return a message where I say user not found. Of course, send any message you want. This is the check I want to implement here. Now, this check can fail for a couple of reasons. For example, no token could be sent. If you try to access this resource without providing a token, and I will show you how to provide it soon, well, then this will fail. And therefore, it will throw an error. So what we can do in such a case, if this does throw an error, we can use a try catch block here. Or if you don't want to use the try catch block here and then again here or wherever, wherever you try to parse the token, you can set up a generic error handler in the exceptions handler.php file. In there, we have this render method. And this is called whenever Laravel detects an error. Here, it is right now calling the parent render method, which is a default built-in method of rendering our errors. And this is fine. But before doing this, I want to implement my own check. And here I want to check if certain errors occurred. So in this if block here, I will check if the exception I'm getting here as an argument, if that is an instance of the token expired exception. And you need to import this from the following namespace, time and backslash JWT of backslash exceptions backslash token expired exception.
So I'm checking if this exception is of this type, in which case I want to return a response. And for this, I can use the response facade. Just make sure to use response. This is simply an alternative to the response helper I showed you before in the quote controller and so on. So on this response facade, I can also call the JSON method, which is just the same method as before. And here on this JSON method, well, I want to get the status code from my exception. So here I can call the get status code method. And I want to send, whoops, send my own error message here. So we could store this in an error object and then simply say token expired because this is what is the case here. What is the problem? We can also check for another exception and see if the exception is an instance of the token invalid exception here. This also needs to be imported at the top, same path as before, but ending with token invalid exception. This exception will be raised whenever, well, we got a token, it's not expired, but it's not using our secret, it's, it somehow is not valid. This, of course, is an important check too. And in this case, I also want to return my JSON response here, but I will say token invalid as a message here. So that is another, um, yeah, error I can handle. And the last check I want to do is if the exception is of type JWT exception in general. So if none of the specific exceptions from before matches, I will catch this generic exception and then also return some JSON here where I say token or let's think so these are error fetching token, something like this. So this is my error message in this case. And with that, I'm checking all the token specific errors, which can be thrown. If I get any other error, I still use the default method here, which as a side note, you could also convert to send it as JSON maybe. So that would be something you could do. I'll leave it for now though. And I now handle all the JWT of uh, specific errors. So with that, we get the error handler. We get the check here if we are able to extract the user. Well, if we did extract the user successfully and we know that therefore the user is authenticated, executing this code here is fine because in this case, well, I know that the user is authenticated. And here we could even match and connect user in quote. That's something we haven't done here. We well, we, we store quotes in a generic way. We don't assign them to users. So that would be something you can do here. I'll leave it out for now. I just want to see if this check works, if we are able to protect our route here doing it like this. So with this in place, let's now see if it works. I already signed in, got my token here. So let's simply copy this token. It's pretty long, as you can see. And now let's try to target our route for creating a new quote. So let's quickly have a look at it. We will need to pass some content there. And the route, whoops, which we need is here, this post slash quote route. So the path therefore is slash API slash quote. And all we need to provide here is the content. So some quote content like this. And if I now send this request, and I copied the token before. If you didn't do this, make sure to sign the user in again to have a um, token in your clipboard. You see, I get error fetching token, which makes sense because no token is present. Now, how do we send a token? We can simply add a query parameter, which is simply called token like this, and then pass the token. Now, if I pass anything here, which is not the valid token, and I click send again, now I get token invalid, which makes sense. Now let's pass the valid token. Well, this is the string I copied. And now you see that indeed we created this quote and we can also check this in a database. If we have a look at our quotes table, you see a new quote was created there. And this is how we can use the token to protect our resources. Now I could of course quickly copy all the code here and add it to any function, any action here I want to protect to put it into the put quote method and to delete quote method. I could do that, but I don't want to do that because it's not really the best practice to simply copy that code. It's easy to forget it somewhere. And if you make a change, you need to make this change everywhere. So to make this a bit easier, the package here, JWT off, ships with some middleware we can use. So let's have a look at the middleware in the next video.